Hello there, welcome back. It is February the 2nd, it's 2020. This is my allotment here in beautiful, rainy, cold, miserable Nottingham. But you know, we're going to try and brighten it up a little bit with a bit of hard work. Um, it's a good time of year at the minute, lots and lots and lots of jobs to do. But it's also a nice time of year because the weeds aren't growing, everything's like, you know, you go away at the end of one day, you come back on another and it's all stayed the same as opposed to in the middle of summer where the weeds just all appear and everything needs water and it's a mad panic. And, ah! So now is a really good time just to get a lot of little bits and bobs done, prepare your beds for the coming seasons, um, just little jobs such as... of lovely manure on your soil. Now this stuff's great here, it contains all three, NPK, they're the three that you want for your plant growth, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus and potassium, so it's got a little bit of that plus loads of little micronutrients and organisms as well that are going to really help break down anything organic in the soil. It's organic itself so it's adding a lot of um, bulk to the soil, it helps it retain moisture plus the covering as well, it's just beautiful beautiful stuff don't want to be without it. Don't try and collect it straight out of the horse though, it needs to be rotted down. If it's stinky, if it looks like horse poo, it's no good, it'll be too rich and any little seedlings that you put in there are just going to get scorched and die. So either get some that's already well rotted, it'll just look like compost basically, no smell to it, but really nice rich stuff. Um, and get it whacked on. Don't put it anywhere where you're growing your root vegetables, your carrots, your parsnips. Carrots and parsnips love manure, don't get me wrong, they love it too much. It makes them fork, it makes them twist, makes them look like, you know, knobbly, twisted vegetables, really. You want them to uh, be in uh, unmanured, kind of nutrient-poor soil, really, so that they'll send down the long tap root, which will fatten up, and then you'll get a nice straight piece of veg. Lovely. Now another good product to add directly to your beds is uh, compost, just standard multi-purpose. These are a couple of bags that I picked up uh, in the sale last year, so they've been sat around. Uh, this stuff works wonders for all types of soil. If you've got heavy clay soil, it'll add a lot of organic matter to there and help it drain. If you've got really dry, sandy soil, it'll add organic matter and help it retain water. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a win-win in my opinion, so get it stuck on. Now all the little wiggly worms and uh, microorganisms can start breaking that down, releasing all of those nutrients and obviously you've got a brilliant improvement to your soil structure. Structure of your soil is just what your soil's made of, how it's made up, is it just big balls of clay, is it sand, is it a bit of everything? Improving the soil structure, improving draining, improving water retention, improving nutrients, the soil structure, it's the structure of your soil. I need to get fit. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm in this corner now because I'm going to do some raspberry pruning. Now, your raspberries will usually fall into one or two groups. You've got your summer fruiting raspberries or you've got your autumn fruiting raspberries. Now, your autumn fruiting raspberries, your primo canes, will grow from the ground in one year, flower and fruit. Brilliant. Your summer fruiting or early fruiting ones or floricanes will grow, not produce any fruit in the first year, sit dormant over winter and then in the next year produce fruit. So that determines how you want to prune them. Don't know if it's a new allotment you've got or you forgot what type you've got, but basically it falls to this. If your canes have fruited, trim them right down to the ground. If your canes haven't fruited, don't trim them, otherwise you won't get any fruit the next year. If you're not sure, because you've not really seen them, there's usually a lot of evidence if your canes have actually fruited. So you see here, you can see the old flower heads on there. You can see that these ones have fruited and they've had their go. Now these ones, and as you can see, these summer fruiting type here, they've just grown canes. They've not had any flowers on them or anything. So they'll be flowering next year and you don't want to do anything with them. Now do be careful with these. Put your gloves on because they have got little spines on. They might not look too bad, but they can certainly cause you some irritation. So all of these raspberry canes that have fruited, straight off down at ground level, give them a good trim back. Nice sharp pair of secateurs. 
And there we go, that's all of them trimmed off to ground level. They'll throw up loads and loads of new shoots, probably too many, because these little suckers grow, suckers underground and fire up all over the place. Don't be afraid to pull the suckers out if they're not where you want them, they will grow like weeds. Uh, so yeah, that's me uh, autumn type. They will grow up new shoots, flower, fruit, everything brilliant next year. Me summer type will fruit early next year and then after they've fruited, cut down all the canes that have fruited and any that haven't, leave those because that's your next year's crop. Alright, boom. Well, I've got a few of them little jobs done anyway, so looking a little bit tidier out here. Um, I don't know if any of you saw my greenhouse that I sorted out a couple of weeks ago. As you can see now, it's all completely cleared out. I've got a nice little ring of uh, staging all the way around there that I've managed to mack up together. Now, one other job that I have definitely been putting off is the next greenhouse because it'd be a mess. Um, so, hey, the sun's come out now and I'm feeling a little bit more like I want to get stuck into it. So, I'm going to have a go. I know it's going to be full of bugs and spiders and all the rest of it, but it's got to be done. Now, I think mainly what I want to try and get done in this greenhouse this year is... Um, I'm going to use it initially as a nursery and then I'm going to grow on uh, my chilies and my pepper plants in here. Um, they've worked well in here in the past but obviously that just means that I'm going to have to have a bit of a sort out and a tidy up. This desk in here, that's like an office desk, you know, full size computer, sit there, do your work all day. Um, it worked fine when I was using this greenhouse as a shed but now it's just, it's a little bit big, it's taking up a lot of room in there. So I am going to possibly get rid of it and I've got a little idea for something to replace it as well. So. Nothing else for it, I'm just going to have to get everything out, sort it out, and then just put back the bits that I want to put back. <sighs> it's a good job I'm not too squeamish about massive, massive spiders anyway, because uh, that was a bit of a nightmare job. Um, yeah, I think if you were, you would have been running for the hills. Um, okay, I'm joking, I ran for the hills. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, so that's got quite a lot of the stuff out of there now. Actually, a ridiculous amount of stuff that was in there in the way of pots and bags and old bottles and all the rest of it so you know that's that come out of there um, which just leaves really that big desk now to try and clear out so I'm gonna have a crack at it well I know I had a lot of stuff in my greenhouse but um, I didn't think it was that much I'll be honest with you uh, so yeah I've got that big pile of stuff to sort through and also as you can see I've got all this horrible green mess to get off the glass as well so I'm gonna get back again I've got me my, uh, my trusty sponge and a bucket of water and some cleaner and um, I'm going to have that fun job of cleaning my greenhouse, lovely. Time for a clean, my favourite job. Woo, that was a bit of a job. Um, so that's all now sparkly clean-ish, so you know, I'm happy enough with that for the new season. It's um, quite late now, it's getting on four o'clock and uh, everything's still outside, so I better get a little uh, move on, get everything back in, try and get it rearranged as much as I can. Otherwise, it's going to be there all week and I don't want it there all week. Boom. Well, and as the sunlight really starts to fade now, I'm about done with that. If you have a wander over here and you compare it to earlier, it's certainly uh, a bit tidier anyway. You can actually see all of the walls. I've sorted out all of my pots that I want. There's a leaning tower of pots there and there's my trays. Um, so yes, I've still got some more staging to put down this side at some point, but that is plenty of time for that. That is plenty of time for that. I don't know what I mean, I'm tired. Um, so yeah, sparkly greenhouse, got rid of all the green to go with my other sparkly greenhouse and my shed which is uh, far from sparkly at the minute well, that's it for this week's thrilling episode you've seen me put stuff on beds you've seen me tidy and clean a greenhouse I think we might have reached the pinnacle now of excitement and awesomeness so you know that's it see you next time bye bye And poof, hello, we're back in my house now. Um, this is my spare bedroom. It's got a south facing window, so it's pretty good for me uh, to be planting my seeds on. Uh, now, I know I've been talking about it's very, very early for seeds, but one thing I am going to try starting at this time of year is my chilies and my peppers. Now, these guys need a really long growing season, so it's a really good idea to try and get them in as early as you can. They will benefit from uh, a bit of heat and a bit of light to get them going, but um, yeah, I'm going to give them a go. So, without a doubt, we're starting with this one, that's a Verve seed, so that came from B&Q. What's he called? Orange Habanero, so we'll give him a go. Um, again from uh, B&Q, so I forgot where I was going there. Uh, this one is But Jolokia, is it, that one? So again, he looks a bit tasty, we'll give him a go. 
Uh, next one is, uh, what's this one? That's a, another habanero there. This is from Wilco Seeds. As you can see, only a quid there, so these are worth a go as well. You get a decent amount of seeds in a pack as well, don't... Uh, there we go, 30, 30 seeds in there, which, um, you know, when you compare it to some of the other ones, is uh, a pretty good deal for the uh, money. Don't actually say how many seeds are in there on average, to be honest with you. Uh, no. Um, so I've got a couple of packets of them, the old yellow habaneros. Uh, sweet pepper, uh, this one's called Romano Mixed, so that's another one, Wilco, again. So we're going to give him a go as well. Uh, we have got a Hungarian yellow wax hot. So, you know, I'm all up for a bit of the old Hungarian yellow wax, um, and if it's hot, all the better. Um, what else have we got? These ones I grew last year as well. These are called Patio Sizzle. Um, there will go seeds again, because you know, that's what I'm like. Again, these were really hot and really flavoursome last time. They form a nice bush, so I'll give them a go again. Uh, what's this one? Sweet Corno di Toro mixed. That one's by Johnson Seeds there. As you can see, a little bit more expensive, but again, from the Wilco's. So I think I got these end of last season when they were in the sale, so that was perfect for me. Um, I've got just some standard uh, cayenne peppers as well. You can't go wrong with a cayenne. These ones are from uh, previous years, actually. I've got uh, three packets there that have all been opened, so we'll find enough seeds in there to use, no doubt. Uh, what else? These are the California Wonder Sweet Peppers. Woo! Let's go that way around. Um, so again, you know, that's like your standard, uh, well, I don't know, you call it a bell pepper or something like that, wouldn't you? You know, the nice sweet ones that you'd have all year round. You find them quite readily in the supermarkets. And then the Jalapeno, Jalapeno, however you wish to pronounce it. Again, Wilco Seeds one. There we go, they always come out really, really nice. They form a really big plant, actually, the jalapenos. And then from Kitchen Garden magazine, I've got these guys, which are early jalapeno. Jalapeno. Um, I don't actually know what anything about these, really, so, you know, I might try a couple of them, you know, I've got the seeds, so I might as well. Um, what else have I got? Oh, yeah, guess which shop I went to recently? Oh, God. Um, and I bought this little chilli set as well, and I'm not usually one for buying the sort of, you know, seeds in a tin or things like that but you know this one seemed all right and the one that i was quite interested in as well it's got the uh, naga chili in there so uh, we're going to give that one a crack as well the other flavors or types are cayenne and habaneros as well so um, i'll probably not use these little pots but i'm certainly interested in the seeds that are in there and uh, i can't remember how much this was i think it was about two pound three pounds something like that so again you know pretty reasonable um it's not a major loss if nothing comes of it I thought the packet was quite interesting as well, because if I do decide to use these little pots, I can always reuse the packet as well, and it'll act like a little uh, propagator greenhouse type affair, so we'll see, we'll see on that one. Um, and that's about that really, um, I'm going to get cracking, I'm going to do some sewing in the house, um, I'm also going to knock this, uh, oh, whole display over, ah! Um, it's just a couple of the books that I use uh, quite a lot actually, I've got the Royal Hall Horticulture, Hort everyone says hi IT, um, allotment journal. Now, this one's great because it uh, gives you loads of advice in there about um, you know growing and when to grow. It's also got a diary section in there as well, so I can like write down and jot down all of me uh, bits and bobs, sewing times, dates, ideas, anything like that. So that's a good one. Um, this is a new copy that I've got for this year. It's not the cheapest, £12.99 retail price, but you know you might be able to find it cheaper somewhere if you have a shop around. And the other one's probably the one that you may have seen the most of. Um, allotment month by month. Now this book is. Um, it's brilliant actually, it's got um, everything in it, it's got loads of information, it's got loads of different types of plants, loads of places and how to grow it and you know it's just dead good. Um, cover price on that is $16.99 but again you're going to find that one cheaper if you shop around as well, I'm sure that Amazon and other places like that will be able to do it. But again you know it's, it's brilliant, it's, um, it's like a full colour book, it's got loads and loads of information, it does it like it says month by month, um, tells you what you should be doing, keeps up with stuff so if you are a beginner or if you just want to remind yourself you know, there we go, try that one, give it a go, nice little book that one. Right, um, uh, of course, things like Kitchen Garden magazine, um, if you buy them in the shops, you get uh, like Tesco's and that sort of thing, you get like this one, uh, what's the other one, uh, Grow Your Own is it magazine, and there's a few others, you get tons and tons of seeds with them. Um, if you do get a subscription to these, usually you'll get like a gift when you subscribe, but then afterwards, um, the monthly ones that come through have usually got less goodies on than what you see in the shop. So you'll have to work, work that out whether you think the saving on the cover price and the free gift is actually worth, um, you know, subscribing for. 
you know, somewhere like Tesco's you might get 10 packets of seeds and then the delivered one you might get three, two, three, four, something like that. So, you know, that's just one thing to think about if you do decide to subscribe to a magazine. Um, start a lot of these uh, chilies and, oh, if you like me, uh, by the way, yeah, that's me. That was a gift, by the way, I didn't make that one myself, I don't love myself that much. Um, well, um, what I'm going to use to get these guys started with, because um, I'm going to start them off here in the house, it's central heated, it's going to be nice and warm anyway. Um, I have got, do, 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 my old faithful, this is my electric propagator here, this was uh, just a cheap one, it's the size of a, a you know, seed tray. So that's absolutely perfect. What this will do is um, it just warms up, generates, you know, maintains a decent heat as well, just uh, which is nice to get in your seeds propagated, especially um, certain seeds that will take a bit of heat to get them going. So we're talking like aubergines, chilies, peppers, tomatoes. They'll all benefit from a bit of heat. I'm not going to start any tomatoes yet. For me, it's still too early. These things, you know, they grow like weeds, if you like. You know, they double them size every two weeks, more or less. Um, so the tomatoes for me are a bit too early now, it's uh, obviously still mid-January, so February, March, I might look in March, something like that, because the truth of it is my last frost date is probably towards the end of May, I have had a frost in early January, what month is June? June! I've had a frost in early June before, um, so obviously any tomato plants that you try and put outside are in the greenhouse, you're just fighting a losing battle, and again if you start them here too quick on your windowsills, these things are going to be tall, flowering all over the place. You're going to have to try and get them from here out into your garden or out into your allotment. They're going to get damaged and it's just, it's not worth it. You want to try and create a nice little short bush, you know, that's going to be, what, eight, ten weeks old, something like that, you know, when you're planting out. So, you know, it's just, it's in your own interest. I know a lot of people will get itchy fingers and want to get sowing and that's fair enough. That's how I learnt in my first year. Um, so, you know, get them planted, get some practice going. What have you lost? A few seeds, a handful of pence, haven't you? Um... I've been joined here by my uh, my geriatric cat. Here we go. This is Tess. Uh, she's 20 years old this year, um, so she's not doing too bad. Her uh, bird chasing days are over. So um, yeah, she just sits around the house, whinging for food. And um, yes, so yeah. oh, come on, get out, road. And the thing with cats, when they jump on you, they're all claws. You try and pull them off, and they're like, "I'm taking your sweater with me." Like that, so you know you can ruin quite a lot of clothes with them. Ah, oh, it's not the only thing about cats, obviously. You know, there's a lot of positives, a couple of negatives. Um, right, so anyway, there's that one. Um, it's got the lid on it, obviously. Now, a propagator is just for propagating, which means just germinating your seeds. Um, I see a lot of people that keep them in here way too long, and what happens is it creates a really damp environment, um, which is great for germinating your seeds. But as soon as they start to sprout up. That extra heat and that extra dampness is going to promote fungus, you're going to get mould on your soil and you're going to have a lot of them which damp off, which right at the base of the soil, they'll rot here, flop over and die. So as soon as they germinate, what I tend to do is take the lid off, allow a bit of airflow, um, you know, and that just really helps your plants uh, thrive. Um, obviously, the, ra the window that I'm going to put them on, it's underneath the radiator as well, so the heat from this, not really needed in the house to be honest with you. If you're doing it somewhere like a cool room, um, greenhouse somewhere like that and you've got access to power by all means go for it because it's going to give them that little boost but go on rambling I'm going to stop have a little uh, beverage it's only coke I promise mm. gee whiz right I feel like I've been rambling a bit um right so yeah that's me that's that's a propagator setup obviously cable plug all the rest of it um, you can either put pots directly in there, this thing's waterproof, or um, you can get like these seed trays here, that's got 40 cells in it, and what that'll do quite happily, that'll sit in there like that, and that's absolutely perfect. Um, I say it is waterproof, what I tend to do with my seedlings, I don't pour water in the top, because again that promotes a lot of uh, dampness on the surface and it's not very good for your plants, so I tend to water them from the bottom, I'd water into the tray, allow the plants to soak up what they want, if there's any left, get rid of that. Um, again, it's um, just ensuring that the water's there where the roots are as well and you're not watering the top of the compost. It's not very good for your plants at all. Um, right, so yeah, that's one option right there. The other option... Like I say, because you know, you're growing indoors, it's already warm in here, you've got your central heating on, whatever it is, 17, 18 degrees or whatever, you know, if you're female it's probably on 25. Didn't mean it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Honest. Um, 
So you can just get yourself something like this. This is a, a seed tray or gravel tray from Wilco. It doesn't have to be Wilco. Um, and again, these ones, these are brilliant. So you can stand your pots in them and water the bottom of the tray. That water's not going anywhere. Um, one of these trays, again, fits in there perfectly. So, you know, you've got your perfect little setup there. Um, a lot of people want to sew into a big tray and prick them out and that. That's fair enough, you know, because you can pick out your healthiest ones. I choose not to, just because I like the simplicity when they're going. Squeeze the pot, pull them out. All the compost there, you're not disturbing the roots. And you can replot them. Plot them. Plot them. Um, oh, another thing about these. You can get these little covers for them as well. These are a couple of quid. And then, so, by using that little combination, you basically... If you don't want to buy yourself a little propagator, you know, you can make yourself one that way. So, you know, you've got your tray, and you've got your lid, and you've got your seed trays inside, so that's perfect. Perfect it is. What I do as well in the house, because, you know, it's the house, honestly, I'm not an animal, is I've got myself one of these little uh, Tupperware thingies. Um, that's just a little 14 litre one. And what I can do is drop my compost in there, use as much as I want to, reseal it again, it's going to stay nice and dry. Um, it just, you know, keeps it nice and tidy as well. You can whack that in a cupboard and you've not got to worry about it spilling anywhere. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, um, agadoo, do, do. Compost that I'm going to use on these. I'm going to use this guy. Um, now, you can use like a multi-purpose compost, something like that, absolutely no problem with that. Um, but a seed and cutting compost is quite low in nutrients and it's really fine as well. So what it will do is it makes sure it really hugs the seed provides it you know with all the conditions that it needs to actually germinate it so um, you know if you want to get a regular compost maybe put it through a sieve or something like that just to get the small bits um, that would be absolutely fine as well but I'm going to use this one um, you can use uh, any sort of seed um, compost really it's just a really good way to get your plants going as well and it's, um, it's got really good drainage as well so you know it helps them prevent uh, them getting water logged um, gosh that's a lot of talking so yeah, really, I'm going to, um, with my chilli seeds, I'm going to probably plant, I don't know, probably only five of each variety, something like that, and if after that I get three decent plants, that's absolutely brilliant, you know how big a chilli plant can get, if you don't trim them back, flipping out, they can go, you know, four or five feet in your greenhouse, um, and they go huge, and they're very prolific as well if you keep them uh, picking. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to need a huge amount, any extra ones, you know, I'll ask around, see if anybody does want them. But probably full grown plants, I'll be looking to grow two to three um, of each one, even though I'm starting out with five. Um, it's just the way it is. Now one of the things with, um, say if you plant in uh, chilies and peppers and everything like that, when they first come up, they're all going to look identical, believe me. It's the same with tomatoes and other different varieties. When you start out, they all look the same. Do I know what they are? Not really until they start fruiting, to be honest with you. Um, so it's really important if you're sowing different varieties of, you know, a similar plant, then, you know, keep them labelled. Um, use pencil, because um, a lot of the time, a Sharpie, pen, given the damp environments and everything like that, that can go and you've lost it and you've just, I don't know, it's a lucky dip. You know, I think one year I did that, I got them all jumbled up. I thought I'd got it right and I ended up growing about six of one plant and only had one of the other. So, you know, it's quite an important thing to do.